friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, I'm still working on the mandolin, of course. And uh, I got some good progress made on the mandolin this week, but uh, not enough to really to put out a video. So we'll wait on that and put that video out next week. Right now we're going to show you a video that was made a little while back on the restoration of an old national uh, guitar. And uh, I was pretty impressed with how this one turned out, so I think you'll like it. Hope you enjoy it. Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here, the Rosa String Works Workshop. We have another budget job. This is a national guitar, and I gotta tell you, it's in pretty much bad shape. Um, it was, it's a sentimental guitar. He wants it fixed back up. Keep it pretty close to original, but uh, you know, it, it's more an issue of money <laughs> than it is anything. He wants it cheap, you know. And uh, so we're gonna do the best we can. The pro biggest problem is that the neck is bad here in this area and the bridge is bad here too. It's coming off and the adjusters and things are gone. The, uh, the tip of the pick guard right here is broken, uh, is missing compared to this one, which is kind of sad. It would be kind of nice if that was there. But uh, we'll see what we can do with it. It is a, it's a cheapy guitar. It's not an expensive uh, guitar at all. Even though, you know, it is pretty old. It's probably from the, I would say, 60s anyway. The national brand is not a really widely known brand. Um, I think it's a Japanese guitar or something. It's got, uh, you know, that little tag on the back. I don't see anything written in the inside. But if I was guessing, I would say it's a probably a made in Japan guitar. And I am guessing. I haven't looked it up, so feel free to look it up and you can correct me in the comments. I'm fine with that. Okay, here we go. Well, I heard stuff rattling around in there, and it was mostly mouse droppings. <laughs> it's pretty bad. It's been sitting around a long time. Uh, when this took the strings off, turned it upside down to dump out all the droppings, and this fell out, of course. And then I noticed underneath there they had a, a guitar string using that as the adjuster, I guess, the height adjuster. <laughs> so, yeah, none of the bridge pins match, by the way, so... Uh, we're just, you know, it again, you're, we're talking a super budget job on relatively cheap guitar. Um, I don't think this thing's anything uh, special at all. I believe it's a plywood top if I'm looking at it right. I That's hard to tell. It's so dirty and dingy around there, but I believe it's a plywood top. It's really hard to tell. I do know that on the inside here, I've looked inside, and it has a very unique... Uh, bridge plate. Uh, it's a very small bridge plate. I don't think the bridge plate's as big as the bridge. Um, I think you can see on camera there that that bridge plate is fairly narrow and you can probably see, see if I can zoom you in, I think you can see that there's a uh, screw holding it up there. It's really difficult. I'm moving everything backwards and using a mirror and looking at a camera so it's really difficult to do do that. Okay but you can see there's a screw there and how narrow the bridge plate is. The bridge plate is not much wider than this. I would say it's about the same width. It may look wider than that in the mirror but it's not. It's pretty narrow. We're going to take all that apart and see where we're at because the bridge is definitely loose. The customer, when I said I may make a new bridge and put on here, he was interested in keeping these pearl dots. Well, they are over the tops of the screws and the nuts are on the inside do not unscrew. Those nuts are embedded in the top um, the way this is made and they're square nuts embedded up in there. You can't even get a wrench on them or your fingers on them or anything because they're smooth with the top. So, the only way to unscrew it I can think of is to take these out. That may not come out good. Um, we'll just see if we can't work them out of the hole, but I, I don't see this turning out real good. Got the second one out. 
amazed. I'm actually amazed on myself on that one that it actually came out. Okay, I'm cutting the glue that's in there out of the way. The hole is smaller than the screw head, that's what it appears to be. I'm just going to have to keep cutting until I get it bigger. Needless to say, we will not be putting screws back in this. We may put the dots in to cover the holes, but we won't be putting screws back in. Well, I don't know if that's enough to get it out of there or not, but it's, it's close, I think. <sighs> yep, <laughs> that one came right out. Now that there's no mechanical fasteners in the way, now we just got to get the bridge off. I'm going to heat this up and see what we can do about popping it off of there. Got the iron sitting on there been on there about 30 seconds and uh, we're just gonna heat up that piece of wood pretty good pretty hot and uh, we'll heat up the end of the knife and see if we can work it off of there I don't expect this is going to be hard but then again if I say that you can pretty much bet it's going to be a fight It came off, it did pull off a chunk of the plywood there. And I don't know what this is, if it's, it might be a walnut bridge. It's possible that it's rosewood, but I'd say it's walnut. The, uh, the whole top is, you know, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the top slants like right here down to a low spot here and back to a high spot here. And then there's bulge this way too. I would attribute most of that to a cheap piece of wood and to a, a really crummy uh, bridge plate on the inside. So let's see what we can do about fixing all that. Okay, being that this old national guitar is a real low budget job, you know, you might just say, well, it needs a neck reset and be done with it. But because it's a budget job, we're going to have to try to find a, a quicker, cheaper way to do it. Now, a neck reset can be defined a lot of different ways, in my opinion. So many people just immediately means you got to pull the neck out and you have to reset it at a different angle. Well, I have noticed on this guitar when I flex the, when I push down here and push down there, and you know, with a fulcrum in the middle here, and if I push the neck down, it looks real good. Well, so I'm doing the opposite. I'm going backwards here. We're going to, I've got some, I've got the old bridge under here and I've got some leather there. And I'm pushing down this way to open up the crack as much as possible. And the crack does open up. I mean, it opens up pretty good. As a matter of fact, it's a pretty good size crack there right now. I've got some warm water. I'm just going to douse the crack with warm water. Do I think this is going to hold? Do I think this is the best way to do it? Well, for a budget job, yeah, I do. Do I think it's really going to hold? I would say the odds are about 40% chance it'll hold, maybe 50% chance it'll hold. I like to do the simple thing first. Since we're talking a budget job, this isn't going to take much time. It isn't going to take much effort. It isn't going to cost the guy much money. And, you know, I told him that up front. I said this would be the cheap, quick way to try it. If it doesn't work, we well, can always take it apart and do a neck reset. You can always go, you know, bigger if you have to. All right, I've got a lot of water doused up in there. I am going to just take glue now. I'm first just going to take glue and just kind of force feed it in the crack here. And it isn't going to work real good, but it'll work. And I'll take the brush and I'll... Uh, force it in there with the brush as much as I can 
I've got a rig made up that I'll show you here how we're going to clamp it and set the neck at the new angle, at the correct angle. Yeah, I've got too long of a tube, I realize that. I use this for inside the guitar and I don't usually use this much glue. It's going way down in there though. Squirt some more in there, see what happens. It's going to take me forever to clean this tube back out. Should have just used a regular syringe. Okay, we're going to take it in the other room now and we'll pick up in there how I'm going to clamp this thing up and let it set for several days. Okay, what you can see here now is I have a table. This table has a hole in it. I've got a pad back here for the back of the guitar. I have a piece of leather here to hold the neck up off of the table. Matter of fact, I think I'm even going to up the ante, put a little flat pencil under that and put the leather there. Give yourself a little bit more room here. And I've got a piece of leather up here. The clamp will uh, fit up here, I hope. It did earlier, so hopefully it will now. And I'm basically putting pressure down on the body more than anything, and uh, that'll force the heel back to it. You can see it's already starting to squeeze out. It's really squeezing out quite a bit now, all the way down the crack. I really feel like I've got a lot of glue in there. Again, this would be the poor man's reset, I guess you'd say, in this case. And I just hope it works. If it doesn't, I can always take it apart. You know, they say you can't take this tight bond apart, but it is truly, the regular tight bond is truly water soluble. And you put steam and heat in there and it'll come apart, trust me. Now, I see another idea here. I think I'm gonna to try to put a bar clamp on from here to here and pull it even tighter and see if we can do that. I'm going to lay a couple of little towels on top of the uh, guitar to help protect that. I've got some leather for here and leather for the back. And uh, let's see if we can make this happen. Yeah, that's definitely working too. That's pulling even more. I'm going to let it sit here with all this pressure on it for a couple days. That will help re-bend this neck also and straighten it out to the angle of the body. I think it's going to work. Um, just got to give it some time and, and time will tell. Well, this National Guitar sat in my clamp configuration for about a day and a half. And then I needed the space, and I needed the room, so I had to take it off there. I was going to let it set for two full days, but I just couldn't do it. I needed to. But I'll tell you what, the neck joint came in perfectly. I mean, it really pulled in tight. It's up there. Assuming that it doesn't come loose again, I'd say we fixed the problem. And when I say fix the problem, I'm talking about not only the joint, but I'm talking about the angle to the top. When I look down the angle now, looking down, looking down the neck, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can get the camera where you can see it now. It actually looks pretty good now. See, you can see that the neck, before, I should have shown you before, before, seriously, the neck was way up like this. In other words, if you went flat down here, then it just changed angles and it went up. Well, now it's pretty flat all the way, and I think you can see that even on camera. And I'm amazed that it really flattened out that much. Um, I'm actually impressed. So, uh, assuming that it doesn't break loose here again, that cheap fix may be all that this guitar needed. Now we have to decide, what do we do about this bridge? Well, I'm not crazy about this top. I'm exaggerating, but really, from the front edge of this bridge, it goes up like this. Uh, and I'm exaggerating. I mean, it's a, it's a couple of degrees, you know. And, uh, I mean, I could glue it back down, and it'd probably hold, but... It's, you know, that angle there's bothering me, and I wish I could 
it's not as bad maybe as it was. Maybe it's relaxed a little. I don't know. But, uh, you know, because I did have it under a lot of pressure there, even, even to this part a little bit. I would like to be able to do something with this. The, the worst part to me is that the bridge plate in there is about the same size as the bridge and about the same shape and everything. It's just not meant to, it's just not made well in my opinion. It appears to be completely tight so taking it out would be more destructive more than likely than it would be worth. It definitely has an angle. This is high and this is low. You can just see it. So I'm going to figure out some way to put some kind of extra bridge pad in here and maybe pull this down and glue it and clamp this and just I, it, it, we've got to change this or it's just going to do the same thing all, all over again. This uh, hard board here is a piece of bird's eye maple. Very hard old dried wood and you know if I set it on here you can see it rocks and it's pretty flat. This I mean this board is really flat. I've already checked it. I've sanded it level on the sander and I've knocked the corners off so that it won't scratch the, the top here. But you can see that it rocks pretty good on here and it rocks, more importantly, it rocks forwards to backwards. So I'm going to lay this right across the highest part of that hump. I'm going to clamp it down on both sides. And step two then will be finding some way to glue additional bridge pad behind this to help try to hold it in this position. I don't think it's a complete fix, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is just, you know, at least uh, stop it from getting worse. Make it stationary. Make it stable, I guess is the better word. I'm feeling behind the bridge pad right now and I can feel what feels like glue squeeze out and stuff. I'm going to see if I can get in there and try to clean that out so whenever I put a bridge pad in there it'll go right up against that. That's what I want. Through a series of trials and errors I was able to make this brace and this is out of hard maple. It's a, a bird's eye maple also. and. Um, I'm going to put it behind the bridge pad that's in there and it, it fits right up to that one brace that's in there. There's no brace on this side. It goes almost all the way over there clear actually. It's kind of a strange bracing pattern. All right, I've made myself a hardwood, uh, I guess, backer board for this uh, piece that we're going to glue in there. And then I've got the clamp in there. I've got the clamp up against the top and I wanted to make sure I would have enough room to get all this in there. Well, I'm not going to. So I'm going to have to thin down this backer board uh, so that it will fit my clamps. Okay, I cut the maple board down to approximately 300 thousandths, which is roughly about 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now we should have enough room to get the clamp on there. It's going to be, you know, I just have a little bit of extra room there, not a lot. But that'll be enough to, to get the clamp on there, and I think it's still enough to put plenty of pressure on this and get it to hold good and tight. It's difficult when you're working inside a guitar to hold everything straight. And like when you get in there, this starts to spin like this, and it's, you know, with the clamps and everything's slipping and sliding. So to avoid a little bit of that problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this two-way tape, and when I say a little bit, I pretty much mean a little bit. And uh, I'm going to uh, cut a square for each end of this, put it on here, and attach this to it. And then that way, this won't be slipping and sliding while I'm in there. At least I hope not. And the reason I don't want to put very much is because I want to be able to get it apart later and from inside the guitar. So I don't want to have to require a lot of force to get it apart. I'm going to be a little bit liberal with the glue. Not so much that we get a ton of squeeze out, but because I'm not going to coat the inside in there, I want to have plenty of glue on this so that it'll make good contact inside there. This is going to be a tough deal because I got to get my arm inside this hole to get this in the right place. 
and the clamp needs to stay in there or I can put the clamp in later but either way we got it it's going to be a tight squeeze plus I got to get this in there so it's I'm not just sure how I'm going to do it yet I had my hand in there before with the clamp so I know that's doable can I get the piece down in here without making a mess Ugh, I'm bottoming out. There we go. All right, I got it sort of in there. Now I gotta get my hand where I can turn it. Oh, there we go. Very tight. Very tight. Okay, I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on it yet. I'm just gonna hold it snug till I can get my hand out of here. And trust me, that's a tight squeeze too. Now let's look up inside there and see if it's positioned properly. I think it is, but it's hard to tell. Yeah, that looks good right there. So, let's go ahead and get the clamps on there while it's still good and wet and get some squeeze out going on. And I've got a problem. I'm not going to be able to get a third clamp in here because of the Alright, I'm going to go look and see what other kind of clamps I have. Maybe we'll be switching some clamps out. It appears that the throat on this gets me another half inch. So I'm going to try to use these clamps and see if that works. Don't know that it will for sure. And I'm not even sure I can get them in there. Yeah, I barely got it, but I'm on there. So now I can get this clamp out of the way for a minute, maybe. And uh, actually, I can put this clamp in the dead center, which is what I want. And go ahead and clamp it down good and snug. Move this clamp over maybe a little bit now. Get it up on there a little bit better. Okay, I've looked inside there, and as best I can tell, we're in pretty good sh shape clamping-wise. Now, I'm just going to make sure that they're really snug, really as tight as I can just about get them. And uh, that'll help flatten that top out a little bit, and then that glue drying in that position will hold that top, I believe, a little better than it was. I don't expect it to be perfect. I expect there'll still be a slight angle when we're done but it shouldn't get any worse I wouldn't think well as you can see we got the clamps off the new bridge plate is in there behind the little narrow bridge plate to try to help reinforce the area I gotta be perfectly honest and tell you that it didn't change the angle very much there wasn't expected much but I at least think it'll be a little more stable I don't think it'll pull up much more than it's than it is you know the customer was kind of wanting to keep this thing as original as possible because it was his father's and out of respect for that rather than replacing this bridge which I would prefer if it were my instrument but rather than do that I thought I'm gonna go ahead and see if I've got enough parts to make this adjustable uh, bridge work again well he you know all he had with the uh, parts was this and the two screws that went through here and those screws do nothing anyway so we're not going to put those back in we will put the pearl back in but we won't put the screws back in this um, this bridge that's in here or this saddle I guess I'd call it is actually short I um, mean it doesn't really go from one hole to the other so I think this is also a replacement that they found somewhere and we're just using it um, because it's just too short for this guitar so I've checked a box full of parts and found all these none of them are an exact match either however these two um, even though they have enclosed ends they're long enough I believe and uh, as a matter of fact they're pretty close to the right length Maybe 
It'd be nice if they were a little bit longer, but we don't have that option. So um, anyway, the only problem with that is that the ends are enclosed. So if I open these ends up straight across, they might work for this also. We're going to give that a shot. I have found some adjusters that should work with this. As a matter of fact, I've already put them in here and they seem to be okay. They go right in the holes and they fit the bridge. I had to file down the... They were square. These brass parts were square right here and I filed two corners off round to fit the ends of the round holes. They go down in there and seem to work just fine. Like I said, the, the old saddle almost works with it, but it's just too short for these screws. And the screws are going in the original holes. But I mean, like I could make this work, but it's going to just work its way out and fall out all the time. It's, it's really going to be a pain because it only goes, if you center it very carefully, it only catches part of the adjuster on each side. So that's not a good option. So I am going to see what I can do with this here and see if I can machine it to make it work better. And uh, if I can do that without too much trouble, then that's what we will do. Okay, I've opened up the ends just enough where that it will slide on there, um, just barely, but it does. Now there's still just a slight over hump in the, in the bottom of it, or, and I, I don't know if this is going to work. I, this Formica table is very hard and it's very heavy and I'm right over a steel I-beam right here. Um, so I'm just going to try it, I don't know, and see if this will bend it. I've got a piece of wood on top of there to keep from messing up the finish. That didn't hurt it any, that's for sure. I'd say it's pretty close. I can see a teeny tiny gap now, but almost nothing. I'm going to hit it one more time just to see. Oh, that's almost perfect now. Yeah, that, that actually did straighten it. I didn't think it would, but it did. All right, well, let's try a test fit now uh, in the cavity here and see if we can make it all work up. The bridge is not glued on, but I do have it fitted down in there, and it does work. The adjustments work. I can uh, lift it up. It definitely does work. So, um, and it fits much better than the one that they had for it. Uh, so I'll just trade them out because this one here was too short. I, I would say that the original one got lost, and uh, they stuck that one on there because it's way too short. It doesn't even come close to fitting the holes. Now, this one has need for a slightly wider saddle. I'll throw their original saddle in their case so they can keep that, but I'll make them a new one that fits this particular one a little bit better. This one would work and a lot of people would go with this, but it still has a little bit of lean to it and I would prefer it to fit in there good and snug so that all this mechanical stuff doesn't have all that extra play. Before I actually make the new saddle, I'm going to go ahead and clean this bridge off and clean off this face a little bit here on the guitar and uh, I'm going to get that glued back in place and let that start setting up. I'm not going to take off this little piece of wood here and this piece of wood here because they'll fit perfectly back in the spot and they're glued tight and so we'll glue everything else but we're going to clean the glue off of everything else first. I'm cleaning it with the toothed blade. There's teeth on this blade, and so therefore it'll give it a little bit of a bite there for the glue to hold on to while I'm, uh, as I'm cleaning it also. I think that'll be fine. I'm gonna work on surface here and clean this up now too. I believe that's going to work. Should be able to get that glued back in place. Looking down the neck, it looks pretty good. It looks like the angle is going to be pretty close, so I think we should be able to make it work. In this particular bridge, there's no braces in front of it. There's no reason to use internal calls at all. I can def 
feel a, a brace right in the way right there. So about there is about as good as I'm going to get, or maybe here. I can get on top of the brace right here, I think. I'm going to have to take this clamp loose, move it forward to get this one, have enough room to get it in here, I think. Uh, and I'm, yeah, barely, just barely. I'm on a brace here too, so hopefully I can clamp this outer end here. I don't know. The way this is made, it's just not real conducive to my standard way of clamping it. Let's try this and see what it does. Might be better. Got it clamped down pretty good there. I'm not real happy with it yet though. Yeah, there you go. You can see see all the additional squeeze out that came out behind it there. That'll help a lot. Yeah, that helps a lot right there. You can see all the additional squeeze out that came out because I put that clamp in there. So that wedge in there. Yeah, now we're getting squeezed out all over the place, which is better. Okay, the next issue, before I get to leveling the fretboard, um, the next issue is all of the uh, well, I say all, most of these inlays are loose and they're plastic. They're very brittle. They've shrunk inside their holes, but they're loose. They're loose that I can press them down. Okay, well, that's not something that happens every day. Um, I'm going to figure out what tool will be best to scrape this flat in here. I don't, this is not it because it's too pointy, so we'll figure that out. I believe the round-tipped X-Acto knife is just about what we need here for this. Um, you just basically go around all the perimeters and scrape them flat. And scrape everything in between there flat. All you're doing is cleaning off all the old dirt and glue. Unfortunately, it's not going to be a simple matter of just dropping glue in here and dropping these in place because they're all back bowed. In other words, the ends are bowed up on all of them. And so when you lay them in here, the ends are proud. And so when you push this one down, this one comes up. You push this one down, this one comes up. So uh, it just rocks in here. The uh, back of these is thicker on most of them. Like I told you, it, it rolls down to an edge. Um, I'm sure that they just, you know, probably put them in there quickly at the factory and then just leveled them off with a file or something. And that's what, what knocked off this edge, you know, and made it really thin. But uh, anyway, we don't have that luxury of doing it that way. We're going to have to find a way to hold it down in here on each one of them as we glue them and so that they all the edges get glued down. I'm, I'm attempting to heat up some water to, to uh, put that plastic in to see if we can form that plastic a little bit. While that's heating up I'm going to work on this bridge. The bridge is fine except that it's just dirty looking and I'm going to take some sandpaper and work on that a little bit. Yeah, that looks a lot better already. Okay, I think you can see we've got the Coleman stove set up here. I believe we're up there in the temperature now where this plastic should 
start to bend a little bit. Let it in there for a little while, flop it around like that. I think it'll become pliable here in a moment, but not this moment. It might have helped a little bit. Actually, the thin edge curled down. That's I'm going to have to keep the thin edge out of the water, it looks like. Wow. It's, move, it's working. I'll just have to hold it by the thin edge and keep the thin edge out. Yeah, that worked. I will say the thin edge kind of curled a little more than I was wanting. But uh, you can only do what you can do. Okay, I think that's going to do it. We can set the water and the stove out of the way. Okay, that definitely helped. Now they're actually hard to get out of there because they sit down in there. <laughs> you go from one extreme to the other. And uh, the biggest negative is that these real thin edges curled down a little bit and uh, they're maybe a little overdone. But I don't know that I can fix that manually trying to pull them back a little bit without trying to break them hopefully without breaking them all right we're going to just jump in cold feet and see how this works uh, i might regret it i'm just going to take the super glue right out of the bottle and try to fill the hole here because there's a big area and uh, drop the piece in use a popsicle stick to kind of hold it in place I'm probably going to use accelerator because I'm just impatient for this kind of thing. Okay, all the inlay pieces are in. We, I'm just polishing up the actual frets themselves so they don't look so uh, rough. I thought I had the camera turned on and I didn't, but I'm just going through cleaning up everything the best I can with a single edge razor blade. There's a lot of deep scratches in this along here um, I don't know if you can see them right along this bottom edge all the way across and I don't know why there would be so many scratches there but anyway we've been able to clean up about 95 percent of that by just cleaning it with this so it's going to look like a much nicer fretboard than before it's not going to look like brand new and the inlays have shrunk over years so the there's gaps around them. I'm not even going to worry about that. Again, this is a budget job, so all I'm guaranteeing is that the inlays won't fall out now and where they really were on the verge of falling out and getting lost. So at least they're in there. If at some time somebody wanted to take time and really fill the edges and clean it up, it could be done. I'm actually probably over budget at this point, so I'm probably working on my own time at this point. On this part of the pig head up here, um, it looks like he's missing a ferrule or two also. We'll have to look for that see if there would be one. Maybe one fell out. I don't know. I don't remember if he had them all or not, to be honest. I never really looked at it that close. 
I can see one's been replaced there. My guess is it was missing that all along. But anyway, I'm gonna rub the linseed oil over the top of the finish up here. Uh, the finish looks really bad and dry, and this just will help it. It doesn't hurt it at all. Um, keep it from getting decaying any worse is really what I would say at this point. You can see that one of the buttons has been replaced on these tuners also, which is also the one that's missing here, a ferrule, so probably it's been missing a while. That gear has been replaced also. It turns, but not the best in the world. They replaced, they actually replaced this whole key all the way through. Whoever did that did a decent job. It's a shame they didn't have one that matched a little closer. I'll see if I can find two ferrules that match this a little closer because this one here is not very good match either. As you can see, I was able to find some pretty close matching ferrules. I won't say they're a perfect match, but they're pretty darn close. You have to look real close to see they're different. These are The difference is these are just a hair flatter and maybe slightly bigger diameter. These are a slightly smaller diameter with a little more dome to their ferrule. But that's as good as it's going to get. That's what we had in the scrap pile and we were able to uh, fix it up there. So uh, now we got to get a nut and uh, start stringing this thing up. We've uh, got the strings on it and uh, just checking the action and stuff. I just found a nut that more or less fit it again because it's a budget budget job. That's what we need to do. And uh, it's pretty good. It's uh, it it's kind of awkward. It might actually be a hair low in some places, like right there on the on the middle two strings. It's probably a hair low, but on these outer strings, it's a hair high. So we're going to take it down a little bit on these outer strings. Not much though, it's pretty close. Okay, we're pretty good. We'll get her tuned up here and see what she sounds like. Alright, we've got everything up to snuff. The, the action appears real good. It's a hair low in a place or two, but not bad enough that it's buzzing. And we are um, at right at 90 thousandths down here. And I'll bet you, and I'm not bragging, but I'll bet you a hundred dollars that this guitar has never been that low at that fret in its lifetime. So right at 90 thousandths, you can see my 90 thousandths there written on there. And uh, it's right on the money. I mean, like right on the money. So that's just perfect. I don't think it's ever been set up that well. Uh, probably never since it was new. And the action up here, like I said, is just crazy low. So we're done. Let's see what she sounds like.
that's the way the love goes for these old guitars. I truly do love putting them back in shape. Uh, his father, I am sure, would be incredibly proud because I'll bet you anything this guitar hasn't looked this good, played this good in probably 30 or 40 years at least. So uh, it's pretty, pretty nice. The old national guitar. It's, uh, you know, it's not perfect, but now it looks like an old guitar that's been taken care of. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends. Thank you.